Welcome back to Factoring Second Degree Polynomials. This video will be composed of simply practicing what you learned in the last video, attempting to make that connection in your brain a little bit stronger. So the first problem we'll start off with is the hardest one you have done with me to date. So it's a 3x squared minus 16x plus 21. Remember in the last video we talked about how 3x squared or uh, this is actually a combination of these two factors, right? <clears throat> so we can plug those two factors into our incomplete form right here because those two factors will give us our 3x squared. The next thing I like to do is look at the last term, the constant. In this case it's 21 and I like to break it down into <clears throat> its factors which in this case will be 7 and 3 alright so or also 21 and 1 which is also an option so we gotta keep that in mind I also like to look what the sign is of the last number and what the sign is of the middle number <clears throat> if two positives were being multiplied by positives you can never get negative and middle terms what should that tell you? <clears throat> Your last term is negative times negative. So we can place those right into our incomplete form. Okay? So now, at this point, one of these factors is going to be multiplied by 3. Okay? Because we're going to have to put one of those factors right here. And it's going to end up being multiplied by 3. So what we want to do is kind of think about which one should go there. 21 times 3, that's 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 pretty big, negative number, because it's a negative, remember. I think that's probably too big. 3, and then having 21 out here, that's probably <clears throat> not big enough. So these, this option here is quickly uh, deduced as not possible, just be, by the sheer size of it. Putting a 21 there is not going to help you get to negative 16x. Now let's consider the 7 and the 3. Well, 7 times 3 is negative 21. 7, negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. And we're going to be adding more negative to it. <clears throat> so we shouldn't be putting the 7 here, right? Right. So maybe the 3. Let's just try it out. So we'll put the 3 right there and since the 3 is there we'll go ahead and place the 7 right here notice the first term is already figured out 3x times x is x squared the last term is also figured out negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21 all we have to see now is if <clears throat> when we distribute or add up these the other two terms if they equal negative 16x so <clears throat> as I said 3x squared, we figured out first, and we figured out also the factors of 21. So 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x, and negative 7 times x is negative 7x and then negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. Negative 7 minus 7 is like adding 9 and 7, so it's 16, but it's negative. 3x squared minus 16x plus 21. So if a problem says factor completely, factor this expression, or just simply factor, uh, the correct answer here is 3x minus 7 times x minus 3. Go ahead and take this time to pause the video and attempt to solve this problem on your own. Alright. Well, let's see how we did. So, first we recognize that 2x squared 
can be factored into 2x and x. Now we're going to put those into our incomplete forms, right? And then what do we do? We look at the last number, this 12 here, and we think about the signs. So this 12 is positive, which either its term factors are negative and negative, or positive times positive. If it was negative times negative, and these first two terms are positive, this middle term cannot be negative. Therefore, the terms, we can now t place these positives, these plus signs, into our incomplete form. That's the only other way you can get a positive 12. And, conveniently enough, they will make positive factors in the middle. Er, yeah. <clears throat> so then, the last step is to break the 12 down. So it could either be, obviously, 12 times 1 or 6 times 2. Note that there's more, there's problems that don't necessarily have whole number answers. The ones, most of the ones you'll, uh, you'll face in your math class will be whole number answers. And if not, then you just use something called the quadratic formula, which we'll talk about in a later video. But anyway, for now, just think about whole number answers. So 12 breaks down into 6 and 2. And we have to think about where we want to put stuff in order to get 10. Well, if we're looking at the 6 and 2 here, if we place the 6 here, we're going to get to 12 when these two terms multiply together. 12x, that's way too much. We, we need 10x total. So we can't place the 6 here. So what if we placed it here? Well, that would be 6x right and this would be a 2 because that's the other factor for 12 to give you that last constant here plus 12 so that would be 2x times 2 which is 4x plus 6x that's 10x all right so let's go ahead and distribute this through and uh, see if we arrive back at the original uh, uh, expression all right now, when you're doing the distributive property with these, I just like to f take the first term, distribute it through, take the second term, distribute it through. Some people like to call it FOIL, but it's exactly the same thing. So you're going to multiply your first terms, hence the F. <clears throat> then you're going to multiply your outside terms, 2x and 2, which is 4x, hence the O. Then you'll multiply your I inside terms, 6 times x is 6x. Then last, you're going to multiply your, out, your last two terms, so plus 12. These two terms, when you combine like terms, become 10x. Alright, and this is identical to our original problem. So FOIL, though, it was <clears throat> it's not any different than what we have been doing because we've been taking this first term and distributing it through the first term on the other side and the second term. Well that's the same thing as first outside and then we took the six and distributed it inside and then last. So inside last. So you're already using FOIL but if it helps you remember then you can think of that part of the distributive property as FOIL. All right, for the last problem of the video, we have y squared plus 7y minus 8. Up till now, on these problems, you've been used to seeing x. Well, this whole time I could have been using v, w, y, a, b, you know, m, n. I could have used a variety of numbers as my variables. So when you see a problem and all of a sudden the variable is different and all it's asking you is to factor completely or something in that sense, don't worry about 
what the y squared means. It means the exact same thing in this sense as the x does, or as the b does, or as the v does. There's no difference in the operation. So, continuing on, y squared, you can factor into y and y. So you set up your incomplete forms, and then you look at your last term, your constant term, right? And you look at the sign. This sign is negative, meaning it was created from a negative and a positive. Right, so now we have to use some discretion about, well, since these are both just y, we can just place a negative and a positive anywhere we would like. If one of these was 2y because this was 2y squared, then, then you'd have to use discretion as to where you placed them. But in this example, it doesn't matter. And then you look at the negative 8, right? What kind of factors can that have? So we could have numerous, we're just going to look at the positive version, it breaks into 4 and 2, and 8 is obviously also with the factor of 1. Well, 4 and 2 don't easily combine to 8 at all, or I mean to 7 at all. They, they seem to get stuck around 2 and 6. They can't be it. And then you're left with 8 and 1. Alright, so you have to think about which one you want negative and which one you want positive. Well this is a positive 7y so you want this one to be the main chunk and this one to be subtracted from it. So you're gonna put your 8 here and your 1 here. Alright? Because that'll create 8y from this side and minus y right here which is 7y, which is what we need. All right, so check and see if you're right. First terms, y squared, outside, minus y, inside, plus 8y, last, 8 times negative 1, negative 8. All right, combine like terms, 8y minus y, 7y, that's 8 and x squared. All right, and this is, whoop, sorry, positive. And this is identical to our original problem. So this is the correct factored solution. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. Practice does make perfect. And uh, I'll see you soon.